So what if I told you there was an environmental hazard that virtually every American is exposed to, and that this hazard is being linked through an increasing body of evidence to things like hypertension and an increased risk of ischemic heart disease, which is one of the top killers of Americans. My name is Rick Neitzel. I'm an assistant professor in the University of Michigan School of Public Health, and I'm in the Department of Environmental Health Sciences. My specific expertise is in exposure science, so trying to understand what sort of exposures do people have at work, at play, at home that might impact their health and how can we control those to keep people as healthy as possible. This exposure, you might be surprised to learn, is noise. It's something that we've understood for hundreds of years is not good for us, and yet in America today we have exposures that might actually be getting worse over time, not better as we usually like to see in environmental health. Unfortunately, workers um, over American history and indeed human history have often been guinea pigs for exposures that we don't understand. I haven't done so much work in industry though and have rather focused on settings like construction where the exposures are much more complex and the health effects might be more subtle. Uh, I've also done work in community settings, so for example a survey of almost 5,000 people in New York City with colleagues at Columbia University. One of the aspects of academic life that I enjoy most is the opportunity to interact with colleagues around the world. I've worked with people at Columbia University, at the University of Washington, at Gothenburg University in Sweden, uh, the University of Ghana Lagoon, at Mefa Luang University in Thailand. These are just a, a few of the partners I've had. And again, I, this should demonstrate that this is an exposure that's global in nature, and it's gonna take a global effort to really reduce the impacts of noise on health. So my research has focused primarily on trying to quantify what people are exposed to, people in the workplace, people in the community, how much noise do they have, and then trying to link those exposures to different types of health outcomes. So it's not news to anyone perhaps that noise exposure can cause hearing loss if you're exposed high enough and long enough, but what people often don't understand is that exposures that are too low to cause hearing loss might still be sufficient to give you a heart attack uh, or to cause mental health issues or again to perhaps increase your risk of injury. So my work has been designed to increase our understanding of these exposures and the risk they present to people and most importantly to figure out ways that we can reduce that risk. So the first thing is simply recognizing this as a hazard. I think a lot of people will acknowledge air pollution, water pollution, these are important issues. What I'd like people to recognize is noise is a different but equally important form of pollution. The second thing is once you realize it's out there, we need to acknowledge that we actually have in our ability things to do about this. So we can intervene and reduce people's exposure. This can be done through educating people, uh, encouraging use of hearing protection when people go shoot guns or go to concerts, things along those lines. Uh, encouraging people to avoid noise where they don't have to have uh, exposures. And finally, encouraging people to make this more of a public priority. I think a lot of people recognize if they think about it, noise is a, a real problem in my life. It's an annoyance and perhaps it's making me ill. And one of the ways we have to improve that is to convince our lawmakers that they should be prioritizing this. So my research path going forward will continue to explore things like uh, the association, especially between noise and injuries. Again, we recognize that hearing loss is an obvious outcome from noise, but these other sort of non-auditory effects are things that we need to learn much more about. So if I could tell an employer, hey, uh, you've perhaps not had much interest in noise in the past because hearing loss is a, a chronic condition and people are more worried about what's happening to them today. But what if I told you that controlling noise in your workplace could actually reduce injuries in your workplace? That's the sort of practical intervention that I'd really like to get um, researched and try to identify, again, ways to reduce these uh, impacts of noise.